Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we are going to be ranking every single NHL prospect pool after the 2021 NHL draft from worst to best. Now there are a ton of fantastic prospects in the NHL right now, but when it comes to every single NHL team's prospect pools, who do I have as the worst, the best, and everything in between? And where do I have your favorite NHL team in the prospect pool rankings? Watch till the end for all of the rankings and all of the picks, and hit that subscribe button if you're new. 60% of the people watching are not subscribed, and every bit helps. If you like hockey, if you like prospect content, this is the place to be. But especially with the 2021 NHL draft over and done with, we can get a pretty accurate look at the prospect pool rankings for 2021. And of course, ranking them worst to best, we're going to start out at the worst spot here, number 32 in the NHL, in my opinion, the worst prospect pool in the National Hockey League. We're now going to move on to a team that you might not expect to be the last spot, but coming at number 32, I have the Pittsburgh Penguins. To me, the Pittsburgh Penguins prospect pool is at this spot and purposely so, but Besides Sammy Poulin, there's not a lot of quality nor quantity in the Pittsburgh Penguins prospect pool, but again, I think that is on purpose. They're obviously trying to contend still while Cindy Crosby is still at that amazing level, and that's what they probably should be doing. But besides that, you got Ligara, you got Braz, okay prospects, but besides Ligara, besides Poulin, there's really nothing to write home about for Pittsburgh, but again, that is extremely on purpose. We're now going to move on to number 31, though, and go on to a team that many would have expected to be at the last spot. But I'll have them the second to last spot, which considering the situation they're in, is pretty solid actually. They had a pretty decent NHL draft with a great first pick, and an expanded draft that served them pretty decently in terms of the younger guys. We're now going to move on to the number 31 spot and move on to the Seattle Kraken. Now, Matty Beneers being picked second overall is really what I think was projecting this place. Instead of Seattle being at last, they're second last. Matty Beneers was a great pick and is one of the best prospects now in the NHL. But you also got some of their picks as well for either draft two and some of the picks from the expansion draft they got guys like morgan geeky and some younger players that can fill in some roles in that prospect pool still that can be considered prospects and i think they are when it comes to seattle they went very young as well in the expanded draft and i don't think they had the worst prospect pool but that's mostly because of the elite stud matty veneers we're now going to move on to number 30 though and go on to the next team in the prospect pool rankings and coming at number 30 i have the new york islanders now just like the pittsburgh penguins i don't think the islanders really are too uh, too mad about this spot. A lot of their big prospects like Sorokin and Wallstrom and Dobson have graduated to the NHL, bigger and better things, which for a team like the Islanders is exactly what you want to see. Still, though, you got Aduradu, Bodie Wild, still some solid candidates for the future for the New York Islanders. This prospect pool isn't amazing, but you still got some guys to look forward to if you're an Islanders fan. But next up, we're going to move on to a team just like the Islanders, just like the Penguins, intends to be low in a prospect pool ranking. Still, though, some pretty solid picks, but after two Stanley Cups, I don't think it matters too much for them. We're now going to move on to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Still some very solid prospects in their pool, but you can kind of see a trend with some of these contending teams. Not a lot of star power. That is the case for Tampa. They have some good all-around solid prospects. I mean, Dylan Duke was a great pickup in this past draft, but nothing that's just game-breaking. I don't expect that for Tampa either way, though, as they're their first and second round picks have been uh, rare these days. Now we're going to move on to the number 28 spot and move on to a team that's kind of hard to judge in terms of the prospect pool rankings, but to me is, I think, a very interesting team, especially after this last draft. At number 28, I have the Boston Bruins. Now, I had them as the worst prospect pool besides Seattle in my April rankings, but after the 2021 draft, where they did very, very well, they move up quite a bit. Baby Lisa was one of the steals of the draft, and I like their draft as well afterwards quite a bit. Some decent picks there that could have major upside, but you already have on top of that Jack Stanika, some other guys in that system like Jacob Luco and Oscar Steen I like. Still not the best prospect pool in the world, but Fabian Lee Sell is definitely a great pick for them and a big part of that prospect pool. Now we can move on to number 27 and go on to their rival from the 2019 Cup Final in the St. Louis Blues. Now the Blues have had some interesting first round picks as of late. Jake Neighbors is not who I would have taken and honestly for them as well, their first round pick too in Zach Bulduke is not who I would have taken at 
all of that spot either, but you do still have some talent there in Clem Cost and Scott Perunovic that can be very, very solid contributors. Joel Hoffer as well in terms of the goaltending. I think it's a pretty underrated prospect pool. I think some people might have them a little bit lower, but I think they deserve a little bit of credit for some of the drafting they've had the past couple of seasons. Now we can move on to number 26 though and move on to a new team that's dropped a little bit for me over this past year in the Vegas Golden Knights. Now the Golden Knights still have some good options. They just got Zach Dean and Daniil Cheka, two very decent picks where they got him and they still have some good guys left over as well on top of that if you count Nick Hague, if you count some other guys as well. But for Vegas, again, another contender that's kind of traded a lot of picks recently, hasn't had a lot of top end talent, but Payne Krebs is really the big one that I think will be a big part of that Vegas franchise going forward. Now we're going to go on to number 25 and honestly, in my opinion, this might be the most over or underratedly bad prospect pool in the NHL, especially with how this team has performed recently. It's kind of baffling how bad of a prospect pool it is. We're now going to move on to the Vancouver Canucks at number 25. I know. For me, the Canucks, just looking at their prospect pool, though, with the graduations they've had and who they have left, there's not really too much besides Vasily Podkolzin, Jet Wu, and if, if you count as well, Danila Klimovic as well. There's just not a ton to be excited about, and especially with Nils Huglander graduating, Thatcher Demko officially graduating, Jack Rathbone as well graduating, in my opinion. There's a lot less in Vancouver's prospect pool, which I think is sad to see, because they were top 10 just a few seasons ago. Now we're going to go on to number 24, though, and move on to a team that, contending-wise, still contends, but it's got some really solid picks over these past couple years in the Washington Capitals. Now, their top-end talent is fantastic with Conor McMichael, Henrik Slapierre, but I found in this past draft, they did decently as well. Great still in Brent Johnson in the third round, I thought. He'll be having a good part of that team going forward. Washington's pool is just decent. It's got some great star power as well, and they got some more depth recently. Not a bad prospect pool for a team that's been, again, a playoff team for so long now. Next up, though, going to kind of more of a team like Vancouver, where I'm kind of shocked how barren their prospect pool is. We're now going to move on to another team here and move on to the Chicago Blackhawks at 23. And again, another team just like Vancouver that didn't know themselves prospect-wise a big favor by drafting outside of the top 15. But for Chicago, there's still some good assets left. You obviously got Lucas Reichel, I think, is the main one who I think is a great underrated prospect. But he's another guy that'll take some time. But you got guys like Drew Camesso on the, on the goaltending side of things. You still got Ian Mitchell. And you got Nicholas Bodine. Still not a bad prospect pool, but considering where Chicago is at, it could definitely be better. And they've also had some graduates recently, of course, with Kirby Doc and among others as well. Now we're going to go on to number 22 and go on to another team that I'm also shocked. It doesn't have the greatest prospect pool, in my opinion. Still very, very solid. But again, this is kind of the part of the prospect rankings where things just start to get so competitive and so tight. We're now going to move on to number 22 and move on to, in my opinion, the Arizona Coyotes. Now the Arizona Coyotes are another team that has pretty big top-end power. You got Dylan Gunther, Victor Soderstrom, even Barrett Hayden, if you still consider him that way. And among others as well, like Ivan Provzvedov on the goaltending side of things, who I'm a pretty big believer in. Arizona, though, has not had many draft picks these past couple of seasons, but when they've gotten some big prospects, they have usually done pretty well. We'll see what happens, but Gunther especially is a big addition to that prospect pool. Now we're going to move on to number 21, though, and move on to a team that's... I wasn't a big fan of their draft philosophy this past year, but we'll see how it fits on their prospect pool in the Edmonton Oilers. Now, I do say there's still some great talent here in guys like Evan Bouchard and Dylan Holloway. Obviously, he's the main one. Xavier Borgo will be pretty solid on that team, too. I like the Petra pick as well this past year, but Edmonton's a team that has also had a lot of prospects kind of stagnate. I mean, Evan Bouchard was kind of stagnate. We've had some other guys as well. I mean, Kaylee Ramoto came to the NHL and kind of has kind of stagnated. Philip Broberg has kind of stagnated. For me, Edmonton's prospect pool has kind of just been in a standstill recently, and especially passing over a guy like guess for Wallstead, I think it means the Oilers prospect pool just has way less potential than it could have had. Now we're going to go on to the 20th spot though and this is where it really really starts to get so competitive and I'm kind of shocked this team is this slow but it's just I think how it needs to be right now. We're going to go on to number 20 and go on to the Philadelphia Flyers. Now I will say this a 20 spot here is not as bad as previous years. The prospect pools are so competitive right now that even 20th overall in the NHL is still pretty pretty good and for Philadelphia yeah, they have a really solid prospect pool. Obviously, guys like Cam York, Bobby Brink, uh, Sammy Tumala in this past draft, really solid contributors. I do think Morgan, Morgan Frost is a graduate. Obviously, Carter Hart is a graduate. Yoel Farabee is a graduate, but still some very good options and some great depth in that Philly prospect pool, really, as always. Now, we're going to go on to number 19, though, and go on to my favorite team in the Dallas Stars. I really wanted to, I was expecting, honestly, Dallas to be a little bit higher as I was going for my rankings, but the more and more I thought about it, the more I think that Dallas is kind of in the average 
Aldridge here at number 19. Still some amazing options, though. Obviously, you still got Harley in the prospect pool, Maverick Bork. But guys like Jake Ottinger, Jason Robertson uh, graduating has hurt them a little bit. But this past draft was amazing. Obviously, Logan Stankoven, Wyatt Johnson, Arno Martino. A lot to like still in the Dallas Stars prospect pool and some good young uh, presence there that will be needed over these past next couple of years. We're now going to go on to number 18, though, and go to a team that's fallen a little bit, in my opinion, but another contending team that, again, doesn't really need the high draft picks at all in the Colorado Avalanche. Now, Alex Newhook is the big one really carrying this prospect pool. I would consider Byram probably graduated, but he's kind of a maybe, so I guess you kind of include him some way, but really, when it comes to the Az prospect pool, Newhook is the big one. Besides that, you still got some really solid options like Justus Anninen, uh, Car Car uh, Martin Kotz as well on top of that. Some decent options, but really, it's Newhook leading the way. Well, now we're going to go on to number 17, though, and move on to another team that's kind of dropped, in my opinion, in the Toronto Maple Leafs. Kind of like Edmonton, some of their big guys have really stagnated. Uh, Rasmus Sandin, uh, Timothy Lilligren, even Nicholas Robertson didn't really have as good of a year as pr as previously hoped. They still got some really good depth, but I think the Leafs' prospect pool definitely took a back step over these net last few months and this past season. But now we're going to move on to, in my opinion, definitely one of the more underrated prospect pools in the NHL and move on to number 16 in the Calgary Flames. To me, the Calgary Flames had a really, really underrated draft. Coronado at 13, you had strong grin in the second round. Why not in the third? And some really solid options, as well as a decent prospect pool they already had in guys like Connor Zari, Jacob Pelache, and also as well, Yusuf Alamaki, if you still consider him. I think there's a really solid pool here. And also on top of that, you got Dustin Wolf, who I think could be an amazing option for the Calgary Flames in the future. Some really solid additions, and again, depth in every position, which I do think is important. Now we're going to move on to number 15, though, and move on to a team that's just rapidly grown over this past year in the Columbus Blue Jackets. What a draft the Blue Jackets! Gets had and they skyrocketed up this list. They were in the mid 20s, but now come in at number 15. Definitely worthy. And hey, who knows? Maybe over the next couple of years, they could be in the top five for sure if they continue to tank like they have. But when it comes to Columbus, you got Ken Johnson, you got Cole Sillinger, you got Corey, you got some go good guys that are like Corson Kuhlmans who add to the depth that was desperately needed and they needed some star power as well. Really, Columbus needed some really big guys, some really big talents. And, and then the prospect pool, besides a guy like Kirill Marchenko, that wasn't really had until this draft where they did very well for themselves. Now we're going to move on to number 14, though, and go to yet another underrated prospect pool in the Florida Panthers. Now their 2021 draft was decent. It wasn't like crazy or anything, but they do add some good talent in, in uh, Mackie Samuskevich, as well as some others, on top of a pretty solid pool already. Now they do give up Devon Levy in the in the Sam Reinhardt deal. That does weaken it a little bit, but you already got Spencer. You already got Spencer. Now you already got, you already got on top of that as well. Um, you got Anton Lindell. You got Gregory Derenisenko, you got some really solid options. And I think for the Panthers, already being a great team and having a great prospect pool is a pretty big flex. But now advancing on to the next spot here at number 13, another underrated prospect pool. I know they just keep on coming, but I think this team really does not get the credit that they've really deserved over these past few years for really solid drafting. We're now going to move on to number 13 and go on to the Nashville Predators. Now their prospect pool is sneaky solid. Philip Tomasino, Yaroslav Askarov, David Ferenc, uh, Igor Fonasayev, in this past draft as well. They did really well for themselves getting Fedor Zvechkov and getting Zachary LaRue, two very solid top 25 worthy prospects. To me, Nashville has some really solid draft power, some really big star power there in the prospect pool, but also some good depth options that will aid them in the future. Honestly, Nashville is not doing too well, and if they're starting the rebuild now, they've already started off pretty solidly. Now we're going to move on to number 12, though, and go on to another underrated prospect pool. I love what this team is doing here these past couple of seasons, just loading up on forwards and these this team will be scoring goals so many times over the next few seasons we're not going to move on to number 12 and go into the san jose sharks a team that is just again loaded up on forwards 2019 or 2020 was just insane with them thomas bordalo ozzy weisblatt uh, brandon co uh daniel che uh, daniel uh, gushin just so many guys i really really loved and then this year they get william eklund seventh overall one of the best picks in the first round and on top of that guys like benjamin goudreau who could be pretty solid contributors i really 
like what San Jose is building right now on top of guys like Ryan Merkley. And even though the defense isn't great in terms of prospect pool as outside of Merkley right now, you still have amazing forward options and so many guys that will call San Jose home for the next decade. Now we can go on to the number 11 pick here just outside the top 10. And I want to say this for the team, uh, for the fans of the team at this spot, I don't hate it. I don't hate your prospect pool whatsoever. They actually had a major jump compared to just a few months ago in the Buffalo Sabres. To me, the Buffalo Sabres just hit it out of the park with their 2021 draft, which was surprising to me because their drafts previous weren't amazing, uh, in my opinion. They made some solid picks. I obviously still like Jack Quinn. I love as well the JJ Paterka pick, but this draft was special for them. Owen Power first overall, obviously. I really like the Isaac Rosen pick as well. You got Proker Poltipov as well on top of that. Some really good options overall that I think will aid uh, Buffalo in the future. You also, of course, got Uko Pekka Lukanen. You're now bringing on Devon Levi onto that prospect pool. Really some solid options. And if Buffalo continues to trade guys, this prospect pool will just get even better as well. Now we can finally get inside the top 10 officially, though, and move on to number 10. This team is the definition of depth and, and just stocking up picks and prospects. And they continue to do it in this past NHL draft. I believe it's taking a franchise record for the most picks ever in their franchise history. We're not going to go to number 10 and go on to the Carolina Hurricanes. The name of the game here is depth, but even then you got guys like Ryan Suzuki, Seth Jarvis, who's one of the best prospects in the NHL, but goaltending wise defense, they loaded up in this past draft, but guys like Scott Morrow, just so many options. I'll just list them on the screen. There's too much to list with Carolina. They're just a sneaky good prospect pool and a lot will be coming up depth wise in the future. Now we're going to go on to number nine though and move on to another underrated prospect pool by the team that just, again, just blew it out of the park in the 2021 draft in the Winnipeg Jets. Now, Winnipeg had a really solid prospect pool going into this draft, but they just snuck out with an even better one. You obviously have Cole Perfetti. you got guys as well on top of that on the defense that can do really solidly, like Billy Henula and Dylan Sandberg. But you got now Chaz Lucius, you got Akita Chibrikov, you got Dmitry Kuzman. Winnipeg really is just loading up with fun prospects, and I love what they're doing. They come inside the top 10 and a sleeper pick in terms of some of the best prospect pools in the NHL. Now we can go on to number eight and go on to a team that sadly fell in quite a bit. Some of this is because of graduates and some of this is the direction of the team. We now go to number eight and go on to the New York Rangers, a team that was once number one in the prospect rankings. But again, guys like Lafreniere, Keandre Miller, Adam Fox, uh, Capo Caco, Igor Shishchurkin have graduated and have gone to bigger and better things. But you still have some great prospects left. Nils Lundqvist, Brayden Schneider, uh, Vitaly Kratsov is still there. you got some really solid options. I did not like their 2021 draft, to be fair. There is still some decent picks, but I still think the Rangers are worthy of a top 10 pick here in the prospect pool rankings, and still coming at number 8, have a respectable prospect pool. Now we can move on to number 7, though, and again, a team that does not get enough credit for their drafting these past few years. Coming at number 7, I have the Minnesota Wild. Another solid jump from their my last rankings. Minnesota continues to climb and climb up the rankings, and for me, Minnesota does it as well as being a good team. I mean, with Kirill Kaprizov leaving, you'd think they would have a, 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 a downward spiral in the prospect rankings, but they didn't. They still have Marco Rossi. They still have Kalen Addison. They still have Ryan O'Rourke. And now with this draft as well, you got Jesper Wallstead. You got Carson Lambos. You got great picks overall for Minnesota and a great future there too. With the youth they already have, now they're bringing in a franchise gold and Jesper Wallstead. It's just unfair and Minnesota continues to get better for the future. Now we're going to go on to number six though and move on to a team that's still inside the top six to this day in the Montreal Canadiens. And it really comes down to depth and star power. I still consider Cole Caulfield a prospect until he plays 50 games in the regular season. I still consider him a prospect, so that is a big still guy to have. But you also have Caden Primo, so much defense on that team, really good off-forward options, a lot of good depth, and middle six players that will come in the future for the halves. But now we can officially go inside the top five for my 2021 NHL prospect pool rankings. Moving on inside the top five to start us all out, I have the New Jersey Devils. The New Jersey Devils are another team that has made some major strides in their prospect pool these past couple of seasons. But after this 2021 drop, it is just inevitable at this point. They are a top five prospect pool in this league. Now, a lot of that 2021 draft was pretty much carried by Luke Hughes, but I really like the picks as well, like Sammy. Salmon, and I think Chase Stone can be something, but the depth that New Jersey has, and also the star power there too. Alexander Holtz on top of them. Every 
everything they have already. The defense, you've got some great guys coming up. Really just a solid prospect pool all around for New Jersey and a lot of guys to look forward to as a Devils fan. Now we're going to move on to number four, or if you're a Devils fan. Now going on to number four, though, in the fourth best prospect pool in the entire National Hockey League, we're now going to go on to number four and move on to the Anaheim Ducks, a team that had a very raw prospect pool, but now looking at what the options they have are, they're sick, honestly, for the future, and will get even better, I think, after a bad year next year, potentially with a Shane Wright or a Brad Lambert. We'll see. But with Anaheim in the forward group, you got Trevor Zegers, you got Mason McTavish, you got Brandon Tracy, you got guys as well like Jacob Pro that I love, Sasha Posh, job who could be absolutely amazing, and the defense as well. You got Jamie Drysdale, you got Jackson Lacombe, you got Olin Zellweger, some really solid options there. And goaltending wise, Lucas Dostal, who I still believe is one of the best goaltending prospects in the entire NHL. A lot of depth in all positions, but some great star power too. And Trevor Zegers could arguably be the still the best prospect in the NHL right now. But now we can move on to the number third spot. And honestly, you can pretty much interchange this top three any way you'd like it because I think all these three prospect pools are absolutely elite. But we're going to move on to number three and I'm going to move on to the Ottawa Senators. Again, you could have them any place in this top three and I'd be okay with it because the Senators still have a really rock solid prospect pool. If Tim Stutzer did not graduate, they might be number two or maybe even number one. But since he's graduated, it gives him a little bit of a step back in terms of real star power. But buff, but honestly, when it comes to Ottawa, they have one of the best de depth prospect pools in the entire NHL. So many guys will be NHL contributors, and it's obvious it's that Ottawa is going for size. They're going for NHL guys at the very least in their drafting. I think that will pay dividends. Maybe not in the star power, but they'll get a lot of NHL players out of this group. And goaltending, defense, forwards, all positions are there. And you still got some great guys like Shane Pinto and Jake Sanderson that will lead the way for them. But now we're going to move on to the top two spots between the Los Angeles Kings and the Detroit. Detroit Red Wings. Honestly, again, you could go either of these guys or either of these teams at number one, and I would not be mad. Coming in at number two, though, and the second best prospect pool in the league, I gotta go with Steve Eiserman's Detroit Red Wings. Detroit was number three in my rankings back in April, but now with this 2021 NHL draft, they have some serious star power. You got Lucas Raymond, Maurice Sider, Simone Edmondson, Sebastian Kosa. To me, the big problem with Detroit's prospect pool was the lack of a serious star in goal. Now they got that in Sebastian Kosa, and I think for Detroit, there's so much potential there in all uh, in all forwards and on, on all positions, all all depth charts. To me, Detroit really checks the boxes here, and they could still be a team that really improves on this prospect pool. Give it one or even two more years of being in the bottom foot ten, and this could be one of the best prospect pools we've seen in a very long time. But going on to number one, and a team that's been number one for me for pretty much the last year and a half, this team continues to stock prospects and. One of my main problems for them was just the lack of great star power on defense. They solved that in this past draft. And coming in at number one, the best prospect pool in the NHL, I have the Los Angeles Kings. To me, the Los Angeles Kings still are the number one prospect pool, and I don't know if they'll be number one by the time the next draft rolls around, but they are seriously one of the best prospect pools I think have ever been constructed, really. It's kind of miraculous how all those guys were in the AHL this past year. Nobody really seemed to graduate, but I think after this next this season, once we go into the next season, you'll see guys like Byfield, Velarde, and some of the guys on the defense as well taking that next step. But there's so many guys here. There's so much star power, so much, so much depth on this team on defense now you got a true star in Brant Clark I think and you got also guys on top of it like Sean Dursey and, and also as well uh, good options from Team USA I can't remember his name right now I'll have him on the side but LA is just so incredibly good and especially their forwards but even the defense has gotten better there's so much to like in LA and honestly after this draft I think they have the number one pay of prospect pool once again and again we'll have one of the best futures and probably the best future in the entire higher National Hockey League. And the guys I was thinking about was Helgi Granz and Brock Faber. So there you go. I think still number one in the entire NHL. But let me know in the chat in the comments down below. What do you agree and disagree with this video, with my rankings? And where do you think your favorite NHL team lands in the prospect pool rankings? Let me know all your thoughts. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit the notification bell if you're entertained, if you enjoy the hockey content. And make sure you share this video with your friends. Get it out there. Get the prospect pool rankings out there and click this card for all my hockey prospects content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video or stream. Have a great day, and goodbye.